Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will actually state and prove Bernstein's lemma. Okay. So, if I get time, I will give some applications of Bernstein's lemma in combinatorics. Uh, but anyway, it is a very, very important lemma that actually tells us how to count the number of elements in the set of orbits. So, so let us start with uh, fixing some notation. As before, let us say G is a finite group. and let us say it is acting on this non empty set x. Okay. So, because we are interested in uh, counting problems, we assume everything is finite. Okay. So, G acts on this non empty finite set capital X. Okay. So, then recall this x mod G denoted as the set of all orbits the set of all orbits of capital X with respect to the action of capital G. Okay. So, recall what is an orbit. So, given X in capital X, the orbit of this capital X is all possible images of this X okay, under the action of capital G and then we proved that this orbits okay, for the distinct orbits form a partition of this uh, capital G and then uh, we denoted this X mod G by the set of all orbits. Okay. So, sometimes we are also interested in counting the cardinality of this X mod G. Okay. We will actually demonstrate this with uh, using some examples okay, mainly coming from uh, this coloring problems. Okay. Uh, but anyway, let us uh, try to understand what happens to this uh, cardinal of x mod g. So, let me uh, state the result. Okay. So, even though it is called actually Burnside's lemma, so this was actually first uh, uh, proved by actually Cauchy. So, so sometimes uh, people make a joke about this lemma. So, this is also called not Burnside's lemma because Burnside was attributed for this uh, lemma wrongly. Okay. So, but Burnside's in his book actually quotes uh, Frobenius is the first one is proved okay, this lemma. But even before that uh, Cauchy actually knew uh, this lemma. But anyway, what is the statement of this lemma? So, this is a uh, very basic lemma that counts the cardinality of this x mod g. So, the cardinality of x mod g is given by, so 1 divided by the cardinality of g times the summation the cardinality of x power g where g runs over capital G. Okay. So, now recall, so what is this x power g? So, this x power g is nothing but those x in capital X such that uh, that is fixed by this g. Okay. So, x power g is a subset of x. So, this is those x in capital X such that that is fixed by this uh, g given element g. So, this is a important definition. This is something uh, comes up very naturally. Basically, this x power g is a invariant subset for this action of this subgroup that is generated by G. Okay. So, those uh, sets naturally appear when you want to count this X modulo G. Okay. So, how one actually attempts uh, uh, this lemma? Okay. This lemma is basically is, a, is an application of uh, counting two ways. Okay, there are these uh, results that one can prove in combinatorics. So, many identities for example, they prove by counting the same set in two different ways. So, that is what we do uh, in uh, proving in this lemma, proving this lemma. Okay. So, let us see like uh, what I mean by actually counting in two different ways. So, first to recall uh, from elementary matrix theory the following fact. Okay. Let us say you have some n n by k matrix okay so let's say you have n by k matrix 
So, this n by k matrix has entries let us say 0 or 1. Okay. So, you have this n by k matrix let us denote it by capital A. So, which is just given by A i j this is just n by k matrix. So, assume that A i j either 0 or 1. Okay. So, we will choose we will assign the value 0 or 1 depending upon uh, some particular data, but let us say this is this is what given to us. So, then the matrix going to look something like this. Okay. So, it is going to be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 and then 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and so on let us say some 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 something like this. So, this is 5 by 3 matrix. Okay. So, what is important think about this matrix one can talk about row sum as well as column sum. Okay. You fix one row and then just sum all the entries in that row. For example, here we get exactly so these are all the first row sum let us call it R1 and this is R2 this is R3 this is the first row, second row and third row. So, what, are, what we are going to do? we just take all the entries in that row just sum it. Okay. For example, here we get 1, here we get 3 and then here we get 2 and similar to that we can also sum all the columns. Okay. This is the column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4, column 5. So, then you can actually sum all the entries in the columns. For example, if you sum uh, the first column you are getting 1, the second column you are getting 1, third column you are getting 2 and fourth column you are getting 2 and then the last column you are getting 0. So, what is row sum? Row sum is going to be sum of all all the row sums that you got. Okay. This is just ith row sum. Okay. So, you take this R1 plus R2 plus R3. So, so that is going to be your entire row sum. Okay. So, that is exactly what? That is exactly you can see that is 6. If you think about it, this is going to be exactly the row sum is nothing but sum of all all the entries. Okay, this is going to be sum of all the entries. But this is like you are fixing i and then summing over j. So it's basically uh, writing in two different ways. So you first sum over i and then sum over j. Okay, so this is what row sum. But, but this is all finite sum this is exactly equal to summing over j and summing over i. So, then you get this. So, this is exactly your column sum. Then you can easily see that the column sum again adds up to 6 okay, 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2. So, that means the entire row sum is going to be same as entire column sum. Okay. So, this is exactly what I was actually telling. So, counting a set in two different ways or counting some sum using two different ways that is going to give you exactly the same answer in combinatorics. Okay. So, that is what proves this, this equality. So, this equality we rewrite in some different way and then we will see that this equality really comes from counting same thing in two different ways. Okay, so, how one can actually uh, look, look into it. Okay. So, the only key thing that is there in this uh, result is this equation g dot x equal to x and of course, g comes from capital G and x comes from capital X. Okay. So, this equation, so now you can fix x and vary g. Okay. So, that is the sum you are seeing here on the uh, right side which is which is the cardinality of x power g g in capital g okay so you are fixing g and varying x so that is going to give you exactly the cardinality of x power g so now if you vary over g you will get this summation okay so you get exactly this sum to be the cardinality of all those gx coming from g cross x such that g dot x equal to x. 
So, what do you do? So, how you do this counting? So, fix g and vary x in this equation star. Okay. So, then you are going to get x power g that is those x in x such that g dot x equal to x. So, that means you are going to get exactly the cardinality of this x power g. So, once you fix g, so this many elements you are going to get. So, now if you vary g in g, so then you are going to get summation x power g, g in g. Okay, that is the counting that you get. So, now we can do this other way. So, how one how one does? Now, you can fix x and vary g in g. Okay? So, you can think like this. So, now you can see that now you fix x and just vary g. So, then what will happen? If you fix x and vary g, so that is going to be just the stabilizer g x. Okay? So, you are going to get g x. So, that is those g in g that fixes this x. So, then you are going to get the cardinality of g x that many counting. Okay? So, now if you vary x in x, so you are going to get summation g x x in capital X. Okay? So, basically you are saying that these two summations are equal. The summation mod x power g, g in g is exactly equal to summation mod g x, x in capital X, which exactly counts the number of g comma x in g cross x such that g dot x equal to x. So, that is why these two summations are equal. So, basically counting the same set in two different ways. So, let us do it more set theoretically. I will also give you actually matrix proof. Okay. So, uh, let us first do it set theoretically. So, what we are do, trying to do? We just take all the tuples from g cross x such that g dot x equal to x. So, now this can be realized as disjoint union of first of all x power g, g in g. So, there is a natural bijection. What is that natural bijection? If you think about it, so given g x, you just map it to that uh, element. So, what is x power g? Okay? So, the x power g, okay, you fix g basically that is what I am saying. So, x power g is those x in capital X such that g dot x equal to x. So, in particularly you take this g comma x and then simply map it to x inside x power g. Okay? So, that is the map and that map naturally defines bijective correspondence between these two sets. So, now you have another map. You can also take this g comma x and then send it to g in g x. Okay? So, that is going to define a map from the same set okay? from the same set to disjoint union of g x x in capital X. Okay? So, now by composing these two maps you get bijective correspondence between these two sets. So, that is what this counting says. Okay? This is purely set theoretical proof. So, let me actually give you actually uh, matrix proof which is much more uh, visible. Okay? So, what you do? You can actually index this g cross x as indexing set for the matrix. Okay? How do you do this? So, you first list capital X as some elements x1, etcetera, xk. And then you list capital G as these elements G1, etc., Gn. Now look at this n by k matrix. Okay, so where the entries 
are actually given as follows. Look at delta comma ij this is the ijth entry that is given to be 1 if g i dot x j ex exactly equal to x j 0 otherwise. Okay. So, what we are looking at it? So, let me write it very clearly. So, you are So, your uh, columns are given by let us say x1, x2 up to xk and the rows are given by g1, g2, etcetera, gn. So, basically this is n by k matrix. Okay. So, these are all uh, rows. So, these are all columns. Okay. So, now uh, if you look at this particular entry, okay, so this is going to be just g1 dot x1. Okay. So, either it can be actually x1 or not. So, depending upon that you put value either 1 or 0. Okay. So, if you look at this g1 dot x, g1 dot x1, g1 dot x2 and so on, g1 dot xk. So, what it does? So, g1 act on this x1 etcetera xk it just permutes. Okay. So, this g1 dot x1 etcetera g1 dot xk that will be again listing of this x only in some other order. Okay. So, we want to look at those elements that are actually fixed that means it should never change. Okay. For example, if xi is here then this g1 xi we want it to be xi. So, it should not be changed if it is not changed you put 1 there you put 0 otherwise. Okay. So, that is what we are doing. So, we are filling this matrix using the entries of this delta i j. So, the delta i j what it does if it is in the correct order that means g i fixes x j then you put 1 otherwise you put 0. Okay. For example, let us say x i is x 2 is fixed you put 1 otherwise you put 0 like that you put 1 otherwise you put 0. Similarly, g 2 if it is fixed by if it fixes x 1 you put 1 otherwise you put 0 like if it does not fix x k you put 0 and so on. So, that is what your uh, entries. So, delta i j is nothing but 1 if uh, it fixes x j 0 otherwise. So, then what will be the i throw sum? Okay. If you look at some particular i throw. So, this is going to be your i throw let us say this is the i throw. So, let us say the i throw sum is r i. So, r i is just uh, sum of all the entries in the i throw. So, le let us calculate what it is i throw sum. So, this is going to be exactly the number of j's okay, the number of j's from 1 to k such that so g i is mapped maps x j to x j. So, that is exactly your i throw sum because you are putting 1 whenever g i maps x j to x j otherwise you are putting 0. So, it is going to count all the j's such that that are fixed by g i. Okay. So, now if you take the row sum then what will happen the row sum is going to be sum of all i throw sum. So, that is going to be exactly equal to summation all this okay, this is something what this is exactly equal to. So, you have fixed i and then varying j. So, that is exactly it is x power g i. So, this is x power g i this is i range from 1 to n. So, this is i range from 1. So, that is exactly your row sum. Now, if you look at the column sum what happens? So, let us say you are looking at this jth column sum jth column sum. So, that is going to be the number of now i's 1 to k sorry 1 to n such that g now j is fixed g i is varying x j should be exactly it is the same equation, 
but read it in the column way okay so you are taking some column okay let's say the jth column and looking at that particular thing so then you will have one whenever some gi fixes xj otherwise you will get you will have zero so that means this this thing is exactly equal to the cardinality of so because j is fixed i is varying it is exactly g x j because it is the stabilizer because or looking at all possible elements of g that fixes x j which is the stabilizer okay so that means so the column sum okay is going to be the column sum is summation j from 1 to so how many columns are there there are k columns g x j the cardinality of this okay so that is why the because the row sum is same as column sum so whatever you have here is going to be equal to this so that indeed says the summation x g g in g is same as summation g x x in capital x so this is what is okay so now uh, we will use the orbit stabilizer theorem to rewrite what is happening here so okay so let's do that uh, computation so let's start with the summation xg which is there on the left side so which is same as summation gx x in capital x that's what we proved but using the orbit stabilizer theorem you can see that this is summation x in x the cardinality of g divided by the cardinality of the orbit g dot x so note that g dot x is nothing but the orbit ox so in particularly i can take this g out then i can write this summation into two different summation so the orbits are same if and only if this y is conjugate of x okay for some g in g so that means x and y come from the same orbit if x and y come from the same orbit then the, the orbits are same okay that is the only condition so that means i can run this over all the orbits okay this i can rewrite this capital x is written as union of orbits so i can write this as sum over all the orbits and then x is coming from the orbit divided by okay 1 divided by the cardinality of the orbit okay so this if you rewrite you can see that the cardinality of g is exactly equal to summation the runs over all the orbit times so this is all the cardinalities of the orbits the 1 divided by this this these are all the some fractions they are all equal okay so that means this is going to be exactly the cardinality of the orbit divided by the cardinality of the orbit so this is going to be exactly 1 so then this tells you that this is exactly the cardinality of g times the cardinality of x modulo g so indeed you have proved that the sum of these things summation mod gx x in x is exactly equal to the cardinality of g times the cardinality of x modulo g so then this proves that if you rewrite the cardinality of x power g g in g is exactly equal to the cardinality of g times the cardinality of x mod g so from this you can easily conclude that the cardinality of this x mod g that is the counting the number of elements in the orbit is exactly equal to 1 divided by the cardinality of g times the sum of all this mod x g g in g okay so these are uh, all the sum so in in case if you know some information about uh, the set that you are interested in okay so okay this x power g for g in g so and uh, in some sense if you know all information about the group then you will be able to compute the number of orbits that uh, that you are interested in okay this is very 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 important formula 
and there are many generalization of this formula that are available in uh, in combinatorics so for example this polyos uh, uh, counting or enumeration theorem is also one of one such uh, uh, generalization okay so but we will not uh, have enough time to see some generalization of this but uh, i will try to do at least uh, uh, one concrete example uh, that actually demonstrates uh, uh, this result okay but this is actually like i said it's uh, application of uh, uh, counting the same thing in two different ways okay so using that uh, you you are getting such very beautiful formula okay so the power of for this formula actually will be evident once we you start using this in combinatorics so this is a very interesting result okay so like i said so bunset is actually uh, wrote down this uh, result in his book and uh, but uh, before bunsen many people actually like frobnes knew knew this and even before frobnes cauchy actually knew this formula okay so in literature this is quoted wrongly as bunsen lemma but anyway whenever you search for bunsen lemma in group theory this is the result that you get so uh, this result uh, like i said can be used nicely in order to compute some interesting uh, sets in combinatorics so we will see that uh, maybe after proving the silos theorem we will see some applications of bunsen lemma okay i'll stop here and i will continue with the uh, silos theorem in next class okay so i will there are three theorems so i will i'll state them and then uh, uh, prove them using only group actions okay P group action is a very powerful tool so uh, there are other proofs available for example one can use inductive argument in order to prove this okay in order to prove silos theorems but we will also see uh, various applications of silos theorem that those applications are very important in particularly we will be able to determine okay uh, groups of orders groups of small order okay up to isomorphism so that will be kind of very important task in this course okay and later we will specialize to uh, finite abelian groups and then try to classify them up to isomorphism okay i'll stop here thank you